So now let's move down to the boot itself. Let me put my pencils away. Okay, now let's talk about the boot itself is probably what I would consider difficult if there's really anything considered difficult about this. Because what you're going to do is similar to what we did up here, we're going to layer colors. But I wanted this boot to have kind of a well-worn look. So what I did was I grabbed my yellow first. Now, I live here in Texas, so I've seen many a scuffed up cowboy boot. And it seems like down here at the toe, everybody always kind of, you know, scuffs the boot up or, you know, the color of the boot goes from dark brown to kind of a beat up looking tannish brown. So I'm actually using sun yellow and I'm putting that down first. Then what I'm going to do is come over with Sicilian yellow and give it a, a kind of a darker gold look. But what I'm doing is once again, just like what we did up here, is I'm layering color to kind of be able to uh, get the effect that I want. Back once more, we need to think about um, these colors as being translucent. So laying one color down will always show through. I mean, I think if you put black down, obviously it won't. Um, that that's a given, right? Um, but with all these other colors, when you lay them down like this, um, you will get, and let's put a little bit of this right here, you will get color showing through any of the layers. Okay, now that I've done that, let's grab our Saddle Brown pencil. This is probably why you want to try to make your own paint. And by the way, there is a number of videos or sections of my other videos that talk about this, but there's one in particular that does discuss how to take the tip of an ink tense pencil, put it in one of your paint palettes, put some fabric medium down, and let it basically melt, and that will create paint. That will be my suggestion if you want to get a nice coverage for this entire boot. Um, but in the meantime, if you wanna just color it, let's start with the back. By the way, always work from the back forward or from the top down. That will help keep your hands out of the color and will help you not accidentally smear the color uh, through some of this white area over here. All right, now what I'm doing here is I'm just coloring lightly. I'm not gonna do it strong white right away. And I'm just gonna come back here, lay this color down over the yellow, and I'm, I'm coloring lightly, okay? I am not going heavy. I am just laying some light brown color down first coloring over some of this area. Um, again, I wanna start with the back. And notice I'm, I'm, I'm holding the pencil kind of at a 45 degree angle. And the reason I'm doing that is I really want to prevent pencil strokes. Now that is the bane, in my opinion, of ink tense pencils. Is if, number one, if you get them super sharp, like this one right here, you see how sharp that tip is? If you go and you go directly down straight, you're going to get very strong streak marks and it's very difficult to get rid of those streak marks. So holding your pencil at a 45 degree angle and coloring lightly um, and, and kind of coloring from the side and having basically a dull edge really is the ideal way to color with ink tense pencils. And I'm just darkening it just a bit um, just because I really want that brown to kind of cover the whole area. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dip my brush into the fabric medium and I'm gonna start up here at the top and I'm working kind of in a circular motion. Let's just get it all. And, and again, work those bristles right up to the stitch line. You don't want any of that white showing out. And just keep working. Now, you'll start seeing as we come down further, let's get down here, see it actually yellows up quite a bit. Um, and don't don't panic. You're probably saying to yourself, oh no, it's not, lot, it's not dark enough. We will darken it. Again, the key is to layer the color and get your light layer down first. 
and get it all covered. Now we have two different things we can do at this particular point. If I want a darker color, again, that favorite trick I showed you earlier, you can rub your pencil tip with your brush and get, oh, see, now that's the color I was really hoping for. But you can control it better that way than going ahead and coloring dark first because as I move up the from the toe base, I kind of want to maintain that kind of scruffy look. So I don't want the entire boot to have this kind of, I want to leave some of that exposed yellow so that it looks like the boot is all scuffed up. And because I want kind of a scruffy look, I don't really want to just go in the same direction. Um, you actually kind of want to go in different directions so that the when the fabric medium dries, it kind of has a mm, scuffy look. I, I, I have no other words to be able to describe this. Maybe you guys can come up with something better for me. Um, so see, I'm just, just laying it down and it, it, it does kind of have a, a bit of a scruffy look to it. Um, you can kind of see that yellow. I'll do this here in a minute. Now, before I leave, I want to come in here where that sti those stitches are that's kind of making the boot look wrinkled and put just a little bit of darkness there and then really make those creases stand out. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. So let's move over to this one now. Now my, my, my pencil tip is wet. So once again, make sure that you clean it off with your paper towel, get it good and dry. Then again, come back over. I'll start down here. All right, so I'm just coloring and particularly here. Yeah, it's getting a bit streaky and that's partly because of the pencil being wet. But once again, just kind of keep going over it. It's actually okay for these boots because you kind of, again, once the, 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 the cowboy boot has been worn. I don't care how many times you try to go back and use shoe polish, it never looks the same way as it does when it's brand new. And again, as a Texan, speaking from experience, I used to wear cowboy boots all the time. Now I'm an old lady and I stick with sneakers. They're a lot more comfortable for your feet. But if I were working outside, I would definitely be wearing them particularly during the summer with snakes and whatnot out there, scorpions. It's the beauty about a cowboy boot. It really does protect the foot and give it support. All right. Okay, so once again, I've laid my initial color down, dip my brush into the fabric medium, and just start laying the color down. And I'm, I bounce around. I'm because this is not necessarily s supposed to be super smooth and good looking. You know, you can just work your brush back and forth, and it certainly doesn't matter if you get into the area where you already have it. But notice again that that yellow that we laid down is is showing through, which is what you want. Now there's a bit of a streak, so just scrub it with your brush. Again, this is why I use gold tacklon brushes is because they are nice and stiff and they can really help you work out any of the streaks. So let's get down here, put this there, let's get the rest of this and then we'll come back in and layer some more brown on top of this. Yeah, that's nice and scruffy, that's great. Okay, picking up my pencil again. Now, the one thing you could do is just like what we did earlier, and this is another little trick. You can actually dip your pencil directly into the fabric medium and come in here and start laying color down. And that looks great too. So there's another little trick to use and then come in and immediately spread the color around. Ooh, that looks great. Okay, and here again, take a bit of that fabric medium. Uh, let's kind of just, the top of that, maybe it look scruffy. Don't wanna get rid of that yellow, so let's maintain that. 
but let's take some more of this. Oh, okay, did you see what I just did there? And that's another reason not to do this over your work. Now, to correct this, watch Secret Weapons Revealed video. It will tell you about how to fix this. I'll show you here in a minute. But the very first thing you need to do is let the mistakes dry. Do not try to correct the mistake with it wet. You will only make it worse. Now, it's fine for down here, woohoo. We can use that and incorporate it into our coloring, but let this outside dry first, and um, when, it's, when it's dried, I'll, I'll come back and show you how to fix that. All right, so let's ignore it for the time being. I know that's hard. When I'm in class, everybody freaks out the first time that they make their boo-boo, and that's understandable, but you really have to wait to let it dry so that you can come back in and, and correct it later on. So as I move up to the top of the boot, which didn't probably get as much scruffiness, I'm gonna darken it up a bit. And this is where, honestly, practice makes perfect. You know, I've done this boot countless times. I mean, I think I probably taught 10 different classes of this boot this, this year. Um, so I have colored this over and over and over again. Um, this is gonna be your first time so watch maybe the entire video first and it will help you probably go forward and maybe give you some helpful hints first before you just jump in and start coloring. Now, the one thing I think I wanna do is just because for the shadow's sake, this boot is sitting in the background. Once again, I will take fabric medium Get a little bit more of this saddle brown, which is a great color, by the way. I love saddle brown. And I'm just going to come back here and continue to darken it. I don't need a lot. I mean, you just want to give it the effect of the boot sitting in the background. You can drag it all the way down. Notice I started at the top, moving my way down. And all you've really done is you've put the boot kind of in a shaded area in the background. I'm still got the scuffiness. So that looks great. I'm very happy with that. Now you can come in and while the brush, uh, the, excuse me, while the pencil is still wet, you can come down here. Yeah, see how nice and dark that is? Because more likely the back of the boot is not going to get as much scruffed up as the front of the boot. So now with that, dip your brush in there kind of semi wet on wet. Now notice that r this is really hard and and then I'm kind of doing this on purpose. You 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 it's you really have to work the area with what I call streakiness um, with the paintbrush and it will eventually come out, but you just have to work it around. Um, and maybe I take a little bit of that excess color and just bring it over here. By the way, once again, work this really into the stitch line so you don't have any of the white showing through, particularly for these cowboy boots. Okay, that's the cowboy boot. Once again, wash your brush. I've washed it, get it dry. Once again, the tip is wet. Take your pen, uh, paper towel and, and wipe off the pencil as best you can. All right, now let's talk about the rest of this and going forward. Really, this is very easy up here. This is aquamarine. I will tell you that I would probably get the area wet first. In other words, all the area that requires aquamarine. So this is again the wet on dry technique. Actually, I think I'll teach you wet on wet on this one because I really liked a very strong aquamarine color, okay? And it's actually this little section right here as well. Now what I'm gonna do to get a wet on wet is I take the pencil and dip it in here so that when I come in here and color, ah, yeah, that's what I want. A really nice, strong, deep, dark aquamarine color. And this is as strong as it's gonna get. Yeah, your, your, your color, this is as intense as it's ever going to be with intense pencils. Um, which is the whole purpose of this particular technique, is to get as much color as possible. Now, 
let's let me stop here and say that I probably would have gone ahead and put all the brown down first and then come in but for the sake of the video I am not doing the entire boot just doing the sections that need to be shown and again come down now here's one thing you do need to do that when you have put the fabric medium down you need to finish coloring the entire thing while it's still wet you could if it dried go back in and put another layer on you will not get the intensity of color because what happens is when that fabric medium dries it kind of acts like a barrier to the fi fibers underneath and it simply will not let the cotton absorb as much now you can add up to three layers of color subsequently between it drying from each layer um, but if you want this very intense color right off the bat, let me dip my pencil in once again. Um, you really need to keep working on the original wet surface in order to get that really super nice color. Now, um, I will probably come in here. Let's grab a smaller brush, uh, a much smaller tip. Don't worry, there's that isn't pink. It's just stained. Um, again, dipping my brush in to help smooth out the color and spread it all around. Just some of the areas that were white that I didn't want to run the risk of getting the color outside of the stitching. And you can see it's a very nice, intense, dark aquamarine color. This is one of my favorite blue colors. I use this one a lot. All right. Um, Let's see, what else would you need to know for this? Let's talk about our, um, what I call the leather straps here, as well as this right here. Um, frankly, for that little center medallion, I kind of treated it like a silver. So the very first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to grab my charcoal gray pencil and just like we did up here, I'm going to take a tiny bit of fabric medium, get a very small amount of that gray, um, bring in actually some more. I want this as pale, 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 pale gray as possible. And then come in here and put just a very slight hint of gray down there and let that dry. So let me bring the picture back over. You can probably tell that that is how I did this here. But now let's talk about what's these straps and how I did that. And I'm going to wipe off my um, charcoal gray because what I wanna show you is, and I'll do it on this back strap here, I wanna lay down the charcoal gray and I'm, I'm trying to do as light a case as possible. But then I want to come in with my saddle brown and overcolor that. So I, I didn't feel like there was an ink tense pencil that could create the color I was looking for. I wanted kind of a dark brown. Uh, cowboy boots like this typically do have a very dark, a much darker strap than the boot itself. So now all I'm going to do with the two colors is come back over put the fabric medium down, and you can see it really does darken that up and gives it the hint of being a, a dark strap. Um, looking at it, maybe I might come back over with the Saddle Brown one more time, just again to really give it more of the brown. But as long as that charcoal gray is down there first, no matter how much of this Saddle Brown you put down, it will always look dark. All right, last but not least, let's talk about what you're going to do down here for the heel and for the um, for the sole. And it's very easy. It's the saddle, uh, excuse me, no, it's the charcoal gray. You'll come in here and just color. And you can do this two ways. If you really want a super strong color down here, you know, do our wet on dry technique, which is of course getting this wet. And I'll just kind of come over here. And, and this is the beauty, by the way, of when you get, um, and there is a method to my madness when I, when I show you the color order. 
you notice that there's probably some bits of brown in here. Well, if I come along now with this charcoal gray, it's going to hide it and you're not going to see it. And that is why you should always work light to dark because mistakes within the pattern are a lot more difficult to correct than say something like this, which I'll show you here in just a second. So, okay, there was the wet, with dry pencil technique. And then you can come back over here and put this down. And if that's not dark enough for you, of course, once you put that down, come back in over with the charcoal gray pencil and you will get it nice and dark. So that's it. That is really everything you need to know about how to color this particular cowboy block. So let's real quick fix and by the way, once again, clean, clean, clean. I can't stress this enough. Um, and the reason I say this is because inevitably somebody will call me up or text me or email me and say, oh, oh, I just colored this and, and now my pencil won't work. And I almost always ask them, well, did you dip it in the fabric medium? And they tell me yes. And I say, well, you probably didn't wipe your pencil tip clean. Um, if you do that, just again, stick it in the sharpener and that will help it. All right, so this is the secret weapon. I did a video of this uh, recently and this is whiteout. If you do not have whiteout, you can use acrylic paint. Let me turn that up right side up so you can see this. Any titanium white will work, but this stuff is very thick and globby. This is really got a nice fine tip, by the way, when you see it white like that get rid of all of the gunkiness at the top. Um, and here's how you're going to do this. You're going to hold the pin firmly. You're going to push down and squeeze gently. The whiteout will start coming out. Again, make sure that these little dots are, and I know that one's still wet. Now, just for the sake of what happens if it's still wet, let me show you. Okay. That dot started spreading. I don't know if you could tell that, but if it's still wet, the combination of the white and whatever that paint is will just end up making a lighter version of what that paint is. So please make sure it's dry. Now, occasionally, like this little dot right here, it starts coming through again. So just go back over it. You may have to go over it two or three times before it completely hides. But do you see how nice and small you can really minimize this as, as, as boo boo's showing up? If you use the paint, you're never gonna get it this small. Let's try this one right here. Oh, that worked pretty good. Excellent. Now you can probably see they're pretty stark, but that's because the paint is still wet when it dries, it is very hard to discern it. That's it in a nutshell. If you have any questions regarding this coloring or the instructions that come with this, by the way, to find these instructions, you will go to my website, www.medinadomarts.com. It's in the description below. Click on coloring instructions. And sadly, I'm now up to 70 coloring instructions on this particular page. You will probably have to scroll through and look for them. Um, if you have problems and can't find it, please text me or email me. I will be glad to send you the link. Um, but they will, they're all downloadable. They're all PDFs. They all look like this. Um, and if you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact me. If you like these videos, and you want more, hit the like button and subscribe. And I've got over 100 now out there with more to come. Thanks for watching.